a hymn. Well, I'm going to be singing it in French. And the hymn says, Great is God's faithfulness. Great is your faithfulness over our lives, over every, each and every one of us standing here today. It's by God's grace and His faithfulness that has sustained us. I pray as you listen to it, that the Lord God Almighty will minister to your hearts. Even I'm, I'm going to sing it in another language, but it's something everyone here knows. I pray God will minister to each and every one of us. And as many that will be listening to it in the internet as well, I pray God will minister to you as well in Jesus' name. Oh, quelle fidélité, oh Dieu mon Père, la nation de la nation à toi, tu ne changes pas tes compassions, ne changes pas, tu as été, tu seras. Indeed, Lord, we give you praise again for this opportunity to study at your feet. We ask, O oh God, that you will grant us the understanding of your words, and that we will not just be hearers alone, but be doers of your words. Help us, Lord, from today henceforth, and even for the past two weeks we have been studying, that we need not grieve the Holy Spirit. Help us, that, O oh Lord, our daily walk with you, through the help and the power of the Holy Spirit, we shall not grieve Him. And Lord Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit will not leave us or depart from us in Jesus' name. Please, Lord, help us to understand your words and to do them. There's many around the world who are listening this hour. Father, I pray, God, let your word transform lives. Let your word save souls. Let your word renew lives. Let your word empower every one of us. Speak to us, Father, for we, your servants, we listen to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Two weeks ago, we started the discussion on grieve not the Holy Spirit. Grieve not the Holy Spirit. And in it, we have discussed various aspects from the book of Ephesians chapter 4. We read there from verse 25 through to 32. And we discovered that there are, we, 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 I remember we said uh, we are going to see this in two ways. Uh, we are going to see first the things that grieve the Holy Spirit and second uh, things that will not grieve the Holy Spirit. And though I initially said we are going to discuss seven points from things that grieve the Holy Spirit, but... I think it's going to be eight points. We have already dealt with four of them. That one of the things that grieve the Holy Spirit is lie or falsehood. Another one that we considered was stealing. Another one that we considered was corrupt speech. And finally, I know we dwelt more in anger. We talked about anger and wrath. That all these things are the things that will grieve the Holy Spirit. Today we shall move on from there and hopefully get to the end of our discussion here today. If I ask you a question, have you ever in your life grieved the Holy Spirit since you became a Christian? Certainly your answer will be yes. If your answer is no, then you are not telling the truth. One way or the other, we have all grieved the Holy Spirit one way or the other. Some of us unknowingly. Why? Because we have not come to this aspect of the scripture. We have not read. Those of us that don't read our Bible every day, you may not come across this place. That's why it is good for you to read the Bible. It is good for you to be in the church and listen to the Word of God. And not only that, whatever you hear from the church, you go home and look at it again to see whether these things are what? Are true. That's why I encourage people in the church, when you come, when I say open the Bible, please open your Bible, you'll see it yourself. It's very, very important. 
So we are considering the things that grieve the Holy Spirit. We have dealt with four, and now we want to see the fifth one. In Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4. I'm going to read here verse, I think it's in verse um, 31. Verse 31, the Bible says, Let all bitterness and wrath and anger, we have dealt with wrath and anger, and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. There are four points there that we need to consider. Bitterness, clamor, evil speaking, and malice. These four things grieve the Holy Spirit. These four things grieve the Holy Spirit. Things that grieve the Holy Spirit. Bitterness is point number five. Bitterness. When we talk about bitterness, we are talking about extreme enmity. Extreme wickedness. You know what it means to be extremely wicked? Extreme hatred. That is bitterness. You see, it is, it is, it is your, your, how will I put it? It is your, I would say there are nine points, because even verse 32 mentioned on that, on that, on that thing, um, uh, mentioned something about forgiveness. So I'm going to, I'm going to connect bitterness with unforgiveness. They are connected. Because if you have that mind of unforgiveness, because if you look at it very well, verse 32 say, and be a kind one to another, tender hearted, forgiving one another. In other words, there is that act of unforgiveness. If you are not forgiving, you are what? You are unforgiving. So, bitterness comes about as a result of what? Unforgiveness. You don't want to forgive the person. You are angry with the person. You see, they are all connected. You became angry with the person. And as a result of that, you refuse to forgive the person. And it resulted to what? To bitterness. Extreme wickedness. Extreme wickedness. Extreme enmity. You don't want to see the person. You, if you see the person, you feel as if you should what? Eliminate the person from the earth. Can you imagine a Christian having bitterness in his or her heart? Can you imagine that? Having bitterness. Extreme. This is extreme enemy. I mean, they are enemies. They are people. You, you don't need to have enemies because Jesus Christ said we should pray for our enemies and those that persecute us. Not that we we'll create enemies for ourselves. Whether I like it or not, there are people who are going to make you their enemies. And Jesus Christ said, those people that will make you their enemy because you are being good, you are being kind, they are still making you enemies. He said you should pray for them. But unfortunately today, the one the Bible is mentioning today is somebody who has created enemy for himself as a Christian. You, have created, you will create enemy for yourself if you are unforgiving. If you don't forgive your fellow humans, you will create enemy for yourself, and as a result of that, your unforgiving act will lead to what bitterness. The, the bitterness is, is the going a, a step further to do what? To eliminate that person. Extreme hatred. You don't want to see him. You don't want to cross your path. You don't want, the, you don't want to see the person. You don't want to see anything or anything that is, I mean, that is the person. You don't want to get yourself involved in it. These are things that grieve the Holy Spirit. Bitterness grieves the Holy Spirit. We should drop that, and we should drop that. And the Bible mentioned also in that verse 31, the Bible mentioned clamor. What is clamor? Clamor is, some other writer put it as brawling. Brawling, it means outcry, or what I will call a noisy quarrel. Somebody who is quarrelsome. Um, be outside, you know, there are some people, there are some people, if you see them, the way they scream outside, quarreling. You understand? Any small thing you see them, they come outside. Come and see this man. You are nonsense. You, who are you? Who do you think you are? Come out and I'm going to show you. That is clamor. Outcry. Noisy quarrel. Just shouting at the top of your voice because you are angry with somebody. This thing grip the Holy Spirit. And at that time when you are even trying to hold your peace, hold your peace, the Holy Spirit is trying to make you hold your peace. Before you know it, from inside the room, you bust outside. To the, to the corridor, from the corridor, you went to the, to the street. Start screaming. I'm telling you, there are some Christians like that. I hope you are not one of them. 
Because if you are, you are grieving the Holy Spirit. And gradually, the Holy Spirit, if it's completely grieved, you will quench it. And when you quench the Holy Spirit, it will be silent in your life. And in the long run, just like Saul, it may depart from you completely. So, we must drop these things. That's point number six. Point number seven, the Bible talked about evil speaking. Evil speaking, still in verse 31 of Ephesians chapter 4. Evil speaking, or what some other version calls slander. Evil speaking, or what some other version calls what? Slander. It means to harm somebody. Or to harm somebody by making false accusation. Giving false report. Giving, giving false testimony. Deception. When you are deceptive about somebody, when you give false testimony, when you accuse somebody falsely, this is what? Evil speaking. What the Bible, what we saying? If you are a Christian, you slander your fellow Christian in the church or at home. You are grieving the Holy Spirit. Evil speaking. Your desire to harm somebody by making a false report. You want the person to be eliminated. You want the person to be in prison. You want the person to be, to be deprived of certain rights. And so you not cook up lies. You bring up false testimony. What you did not see, you say you saw. What the person did not do, you say the person did it. Just because, you see, all these things are connected. connected. Just because you enter the person. You have extreme enmity. Extreme hatred for that person. And so you speak evil of the person. God said to the Israelites, as God told you and I also, in Exodus chapter 20 verse 16, making us understand you should not be a false witness against what? Your neighbor. Do not be a false witness against your neighbor. And look at what Jesus Christ said himself in Matthew chapter 19. Turn your Bible with me to Matthew chapter 19. We are going to read that part. Matthew chapter 19. Let us see what Jesus Christ said in verse 18. He also was trying to bring to uh, trying to remind us of Exodus 20 verse 16. Towards the end of verse 18, he says, "That shall not be a false." Witness that shall not be a false witness. These are things that grieve the Holy Spirit. Even Jesus Christ taught these things that grieve the Holy Spirit. Let's try to avoid these things. Let's try to avoid them. That is point number seven evil speaking. Evil speaking. Point number eight malice. Malice. Very, very common. Very common. It grieves the Holy Spirit. If you don't know, know it now. Malice grieves the Holy Spirit. Malice grieves the Holy Spirit. What is malice? Malice is desire to see others suffer and to continuously dislike them. Malice is to see somebody suffer. You don't speak to the person. The person greets you will not answer the person. All your desire, all your hard desire is to see that person get into what? Trouble. You will see that person being punished. That is malice. It grieves the Holy Spirit. If you have any type of art, that type of art is a devilish art which you need to drop, which you and I need to drop today if we're having that in our lives. Now I want to consider the second subtopic. We say things that will not grieve the Holy Spirit. Things that will not grieve the Holy Spirit. Of course, when the Bible said in Ephesians, let's go back to the Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4, I'm going to read there verse 25. Ephesians 4, 25. Now when the Bible said put on lying because lying grieves the Holy Spirit. He said, speak every man truth with his neighbor. So things that will not grieve the Holy Spirit if you are what? Truthful. If you are truthful, you remain truthful, you walk in truth. Don't forget Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. 
And so if you have Jesus, you have truth in you. That's why I asked you when I was talking about things that bring the spirit lying. How did lie come into a person who is truthful, a person who has Jesus? How did it get in there? Because we tend to do the right thing at the wrong time. Or we try to be at the wrong place. And the spirit makes us understand that very day. So we must be truthful. You should learn to tell the truth. Learn to tell what? The truth. Learn to be truthful at all times. Learn to be truthful at all times. That we make the Holy Spirit happy when you speak the truth. The Holy Spirit will not be grieved. The Holy Spirit will be excited. The Holy Spirit will empower you. And you will dwell safely. The enemy, you will not give the devil a place in your life. And I pray God will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. And also if you look at it very well, Ephesians chapter 4, things that will not grieve the Holy Spirit. I tell me in verse 26, it says, Paul said, be ye angry and sin not. Anger without sin. I said the other day, is it possible to be angry without sin? Yes, it's possible. You are angry because you don't. You are not happy concerning it, uh, concerning something. Does not mean you should allow the anger to go into what into wrath, from wrath into what unforgiveness, unforgiveness into connected to what bitterness, and then on and on like that. They are all connected. So, one of the things that will not be the Holy Spirit is when you when you when you refuse to sin, even though you are angry. When you refuse to sin, when you say, "Look, I will not sin." Because I'm angry, why would I want to sin against God? Everybody gets angry. If there's any human being that doesn't get angry, you should come and tell me. Or you should write me and say, Pastor, I don't get angry at all. That would be a very big lie. All of us will get angry one way or the other. But when you get angry, the Bible says what? Sin not. Sin not. When you sin in your anger, you grieve the Holy Spirit. When Moses sinned in his anger, God was not happy with him. But Moses have been angry with the children of Israel several times, but did not sin. And God justified his anger. What they were doing was wrong. Samuel was angry with the Israelites when they asked for a king. God did what? God justified his anger. God said, Samuel, ah, don't forget about it. They have not rejected you. It's me they have rejected. You understand what I'm trying to say? Because Samuel did not sin. So, let us let us drop any such things that will make us to sin against God. Let us see what the Bible said in the book of Matthew. Jesus again teaching in Matthew chapter 5, verse 22. Matthew chapter 5, verse 22. He said, But I say unto you that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause, shall be in danger of the judgment. I'm going to stop there. Whosoever is angry with his brother without a call, without any reason, you're just angry. Just because you are envious. You, do you know that envy can lead to anger? Do you know that? Envy can lead to anger. The person will greet you, you will just be angry without a cause. The person will not offend you, nothing. The implication of what Jesus Christ is saying is that there is the possibility of you getting what? Getting angry. But when you are angry without any reason, you are just angry with the pen for no reason, you are liable to face God's judgment. That's what Jesus Christ is trying to say. And I pray God will help us not to be, not to face a judgment because of anger in Jesus' name. So we'll try to drop any such things in our lives. Ephesians chapter 4. I'm reading verse 28. The Bible talked about things that give the Holy Spirit there stealing. And the latter part of it, the second part of it, it says, Let him that, that stole steal no more. And then the second part says, But rather let him labor, working with his hands the things which are good, that he may have to give to him that needed. The thing that will not give the Holy Spirit, also in verse, in verse 32, he mentioned, he said, And be a kind one to another. You should be kind and be willing to help others. Are you getting me? Be kind and be willing to help others. Be kind and be willing to help others. Be kind and be willing 
to help others at all times. Have that desire to help your fellow man. That's what Paul was saying that, look, don't just sit down folding your hands. Go and walk. Do something. The purpose of your walking, you see, the purpose, the reason why God will bless you is because God wants you to be what? A blessing. The reason why God will bless you is because God wants you to be a blessing. And so, if you are, if you are not working, go and look for a job. Get a job and work. And when you start working, learn to help others who are in need. You can even help them, show them the way to also Lord, to also uh, get job to do. And when they get job to do, you also tell them to do what? I have shown you favor. I have shown you kindness. You also do what? Do it to others in the church. We must learn to help ourselves. Because in terms of material blessings, we are not the same. In terms of spiritual blessings, we are not the same. In terms of faith, we, we have different levels of faith. So we are there to help ourselves. Both financially, spiritually, and otherwise. So, if you have that mind of kindness, if you have that willingness to help those who are in need, you won't grieve the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will be happy. But if your own is to steal from people in the church, there are some people stealing the offering. People that are counting the offering. And they are counting, counting, counting. They will look. If somebody there did not look, then they will take the money and put it in their pocket. Stealing in the church. Money that is meant to help others, you are stealing from it. It's a sin. And so you must learn to help others. By so doing, you will not grieve the Holy Spirit. Pray God will help us in Jesus' name. And also, another thing that will not grieve the Holy Spirit is in, can be found in verse 29. You know, the, the first part says, Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying. Let your speech be edifying. I mean, learn to speak edifying words. Learn to speak words that will do what? That will encourage people. Learn to speak words that will make people to grow in, the, in, in spirit. People to grow in the Lord. Do not utter words that will tear them down. Do not utter words that will tear people down. Speak a defined word. Speak encouraging word. Speak empowering words. Not derogatory words. If you do this thing, you won't be the Holy Spirit. If you speak words that are edifying to people. And if we look at the book of Colossians chapter 4, let's look at Colossians chapter 4, I'll read verse 6. Colossians chapter 4 verse 6, the Bible says, let your speech be always with grace, seasoned with salt, that ye may know how ye ought to answer every man. Let your speech always be great, graceful, Gracious words, words of encouragement, words of empowerment, words that will edify people, that will make people to be uplifted spiritually, that will make them to be happy in the Lord. So, oh, Father, I thank you for this brother. I thank you for this sister. I thank you for the service. Edifying words. Words that edify. Learn to speak such words, and the Holy Spirit will not be grieved. Because in the first place, is the one that is going to help you to do what? To speak such words words. Amen. And the Bible said in the book of Ephesians again chapter 4 and then verse, verse um, 32 it talks about forgiveness. Forgiveness. It said forgiving one another even as God for Christ's sake had forgiven you. Forgiveness is very vital. This is a very strong issue, a very strong issue in the life of so many people today. And I'm telling you, Jesus Christ said, he said, if you do not forgive men their trespasses, neither will my heavenly father forgive you your trespasses. So, I mean, and, I mean, I mean it's, it's, it's obvious. If God will not forgive your trespasses, that means that God that will not forgive your trespasses, will not allow you to enter into his world, his kingdom. It is easy. So the implication of what Jesus Christ is saying is that if you are not forgiving, if you don't learn to forgive others who offend you, 
If you don't learn to forgive others who offend you, others who have done one to the other that offend you, if you don't learn to forgive them, Jesus Christ is trying to say that, then you don't have any part in the kingdom of God. You don't have any part in the kingdom of God. You don't have any part at all in God's kingdom. So, you must learn to forgive others no matter what. Some people may say, ah, you don't know what this person has done to me. You don't know what my mother has done to me, like the film we watched yesterday. A, a, a lady was, was struggling with, 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 I mean, she was struggling with an issue in her life, but God delivered her. Imagine a woman giving birth to a child, because the woman cannot take care of the child. The woman decided to go and dump the child by the riverside. And to today, she doesn't know the mother, she doesn't know the father, she knows nobody, she's just on her own. She was brought up in an orphanage. And then she grew up, when she realized that she's in an orphanage, and where's her parents, they say, where they got her from the riverside. She, parents that she doesn't know, she did not know the parents. She had unforgiving heart. She said she would never forgive them. She would never forgive them what they have done. I mean, that, I don't know what somebody would have done that is extremely bad to you as an individual or as a Christian. That is extremely bad. The lady gave a testimony that it was after she gave her life to Jesus. That Jesus helped her to remove what? That's act of unforgiveness. She doesn't know the parents, yet she was carrying unforgiving to an unknown parent. Unknown parents. If she had remained in that forgiveness, forget about it that ah, how can God, how can God cast this girl? This girl that the parents abandoned by the riverside. And now the girl refused to forgive them because she doesn't know girl. How can God cast her into the lake of fire? God will cast her into the lake of fire because the Bible says, if you do not forgive men their trespasses, neither will my heavenly father forgive you. And if you are unforgiving in your heart, you grieve the Holy Spirit. You grieve the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will be grieved. And so if you don't want to grieve him, you must learn to forgive. No matter how terrible somebody has offended you. If you are a child of God today, listening to me today, you have not forgiven somebody. I want to think about you. If you say you are a Christian, then you have been grieving the Holy Spirit. Oh, by that unforgiving us, you have been grieving Him. And if you continue to grieve the Holy Spirit, you will miss the kingdom of God. But I pray that will not be your portion in Jesus' name. So as a child of God, you need to buy your hand right now and ask the Lord to have mercy upon you. Ask the Lord to forgive you. Ask the Lord to, to, ask the Lord to help you by His grace to take away this for, unforgiving heart from you. Tell the Lord to help you so that you will forgive those who have offended you, no matter, no matter how the offenses has been, no matter the offense, the offense committed against you. Pray to God. Ask Him to grant you the grace. And we have heard the word of God. Grieve not the Holy Spirit. We have seen things, eight things that grieve the Holy Spirit, and some other seven or eight things that will not grieve the Holy Spirit. So which line are you? What are you doing? What aspect are you going to take? Are you going to take the ones that grieve him? Are you going to continue in there? Or are you going to say today, you're going to walk in the right one that will not grieve him? Why not talk to the living God today? And ask him to have mercy upon you. Ask him, no matter what you have done, no matter what you have done, if you, no matter who you are, you may be a worker in the church, you may be a pastor, you may be a bishop, you may be a prophet, whatever you are in the church or outside the church, if you are grieving the Holy Spirit, if you are not careful, you will get to where? To the kingdom of darkness. You will go to hell. If you are not careful, if you continue to grieve the Holy Spirit, you will quench him completely. And when you quench the Holy Spirit, then tell me how you will get to the kingdom of God. Because you have already taken God out of your life. Ask the Lord to have mercy upon you. Rededicate your life to him today. Go through this series again, these three series of messages again. And see where you are falling short. And ask God to have mercy upon you. Ask Him to have mercy upon you. Ask Him to refill you with the Holy Spirit again. Ask Him to refill you with the Holy Spirit again. You need to be refilled. The Lord needs to cleanse you, purge you from every sin, every unrighteousness. As David said, Create me heart cleaner. Oh Lord, and renew right spirit within me, creating me a clean heart. Oh Lord, and renew right spirit within me.
me. Cast me not away from thy presence, O Lord. Take not my Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me thy joy of thy salvation and renew thy spirit within me. Cast me not away, cast me not away from thy presence, O Lord. Take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me, restore unto me the joy of thy salvation and renew thy spirit within me. Talk to God. Tell him to renew the right spirit, to renew a clean heart in you again, so that all these things you will drop them completely, so that you and I will be able to get to the kingdom of God. Because it is through the help of the Holy Spirit that we can get to God's kingdom. If we are going to grieve Him, if we quench Him, if He has departed from all, if He is silent from our life, how can we make God's kingdom? Ask the Lord to have mercy on you. Have the Lord to create in you a cleaner, to create in you a new heart. And you that is hearing me, you have not surrendered to Jesus today. Ask Him to have mercy upon you. Invite Him into your life. Say, Lord Jesus, I come to you today. Please have mercy upon me. I have sinned against you. I am, a, I am the chief, chiefest of sinners. Please have mercy upon me. I have lied. I have bitterness. I have unforgiveness. I have malice. And many other sins. I have fornicated. I have stolen. Please have mercy upon me. Please have mercy upon me. Forgive me my sins, O oh God. Write my name in the book of life. Lord Jesus, I accept you today as my Lord and Savior. Come into my life. Pray that prayer and Jesus will come into your life and your life will not remain the same again. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for your work. We appreciate you for as many who have had today and who are rededicating themselves or who have rededicated themselves and who are surrendering unto you. Father, we pray you accept every one of us. Help us, O Lord, that as from today, O God, indeed we shall not grieve the Holy Spirit in any way, in any form. Thank you, Heavenly Father, because you have had us. Receive all the praise and glory for we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.